everyone, it's Cindy. So, welcome back to Studio Lou. Um, I think I'm just going to get started today on my next journal. Um, I have a few other things kind of in process, but they're not things that I specifically um, can share yet. So, I, I probably will do some more ephemera making kind of videos for things I'm working on for those journals and things. But I thought maybe we would get started on the next journal that um, I want to make with you. <laughs> So, um, today I am pairing a couple of books. So I found this book some time ago called Sea Witches by Joanne Robertson and Laszlo Gall. And it got me really inspired to make a sea witches journal. Um, so what I want to do, I have this old book called The Turn of the Tide by Eleanor H. Porter. And, um... This is the book plate, which is the only thing I plan to use from the original book. It's the story of how Margaret solved her problem. <laughs> so it's um it's not related in any way to the sea, but it is called The Turn of the Tide, and I like that. And um, it is actually from 1908, and I love the color of the book itself. All I've done so far is I just took the book out, took out the old spine and everything that would remove, and the, the old book cloth. Um, so now we're down to the bare bones. I've cleaned it. Um, so I think I'm going to be using something that's actually sea witch related, and I'm actually going to be covering this image on the front. Now normally I would leave an image like this alone um, but it doesn't fit the theme of this journal. It's like a love scene um, and it's got a little bit of bleaching there anyways so I'm not really feeling too sad about it. It's not a particularly like incredible you know book front but I am going to keep this because I like this um, this font. I like how it looks. It's a nice little journal. So all of that being said, um, now I'm going to just dig into Sea Witches and probably start choosing what pages I will use in the book, as well as what I will make ephemera from and, and also something to go on the cover of the book. Hopefully in this book we'll find something. So um, the nice thing is, is that because this is such a small journal, I'll be able to use a single page of this book in here. Um, so I'm just going to start actually by removing the spine of the book and I'm just going to do that very, I, I just literally bend it back and pull it right off. I don't need to use a blade on this. It's a small book. Um, so that's that. Okay. So this red page I'm not going to use for anything probably in this book. It's not the right colors, but it will go somewhere. This I will keep because I may, I may use it for something. Now the cool thing in this book is this particular style of this, like all of these oceanic creatures on this turtle's back, that theme follows through this book. And I've actually used um, a couple of these already in another journal that I made. So I think that one I'll keep for ephemera making, probably. Now some of the, the pictures in here don't really um, have a whole lot to do with it, but um, I want to try to keep the story alive in this journal because it doesn't actually have a lot of words, but what it is about is, um, <laughs> and it's really quite funny, is that it's a it's a Scottish like tale and I don't know if it's actually a Scottish tale but the book tells it as though it is and it's about um if you have a boiled egg um to to get rid of like the shell to to break up the egg shell or you'll attract sea witches <laughs> so okay so I want to try to keep the story together. So there's one. Um, now this doesn't particularly, you know what, it does have the eggs though. So we might use that as a piece of ephemera. We'll see. And then this can go over here. Okay. Now I don't know if I'll be able to keep the whole story. 
because obviously it's double-sided, right? When you're done eating, give your eggshells a beating, never leave them whole. Why, I would ask her, well, into sharp, jagged shards, I shattered the shells. So I could make that a page in the journal. Um, though I have to say, I'm not really into this illustration of this, <laughs> this lady. Um, hmm, I have to think on it. Ghastly goat witches gather in the darkling gloom. Okay. Okay, so this is one of my, like, sort of planning sessions for this journal. So there might be not a whole lot getting done because <laughs> I'm just sort of planning it is a rainy cool day today we had um, a thunderstorm last night so okay um I mean, I might end up using the words and some of the imagery in ephemera. Ghastly ghosts which is gather in the darkling gloom. Silently they come, broom riding hideous hags in search of eggshells. This one I could see myself using in the journal as a signature. Now, I have to find a way because I want to keep that... Um, I can go how far? Probably here to keep that on one page. So let's see. Yeah, if we fold this here, that should. That should be okay. Might have to do a little trimming, but not too, too much. Okay. And then I'll leave this alone because I might use it as a tip. Um, and we'll keep Grandma. <laughs> Down to earth they steal, weaving eerie, evil spells, and gathering shells. Yeah, so this one again, I think I will also keep. need to you to do this um, this way I can just look at the actual page and fold it accordingly there we go okay. shells turn into ships delicate eggshell vessels wretched roundabouts So I'm just going to try to maybe keep these in order. So this is the first one. And I won't put these all in the same signature, but just as I'm organizing, I'm just going to keep them together this way. So this book, let me just check how many signatures I will put in here. What is the size of the spine going to be? Just under an inch and a half, so probably one, two, three, four, five signatures, I think. Okay. One, two, three, four, probably one more at least. 
black cloud, white edge, churning, troubled waters, a sailor's warning. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll keep this one. It's hard not to just keep all the pages whole, but <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> Need to use some of them for ephemera and also I don't want to just basically rebind a book <laughs> okay so these ones I'm going to use for ephemera and then I need to find what I'm going to use on the front page So, a candidate for the front page could be this because it's nice. It has the um, it has the sea witches. It has nice water and the boat. That one is the uh, the sinking boat. Yeah, I think that'll be the candidate for the cover. So, pull that out. Uh-huh. So I'll just set these over here. So now I need to look at the size of this cover and determine how big I can make this. So let's just tear it from the side of the sea witch here. Actually, I should use my paper cutter. This has to get be straight. <laughs> Let's not do this all silly, you know. Okay. <clears throat> I just ordered some new blades for this thing today because uh, this one's getting dull. And I got some that were not the Fiskars brand, but they don't fit it too well. And it's very easy to cut yourself um, on them. They have like a spring-loaded kind of thing in them. And oh, I got a little cut like a few, like a couple months ago, just doing exactly that. And it was not good. So I'll just set that aside for ephemera. Um, okay, so I need to decide how wide I can have this. Probably just about the end of the sail, right about there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, right there. That's a vast improvement, I think. <laughs> okay, let's work on the cover now. Let's move my potential signatures. I'll just put them in my basket of stuff um, along with all this stuff so I can just focus on working on my cover for now. Okay, so first thing I want to do is put this on cardstock. I want to back it to thicken it a little. And maybe even um, stitch around it. Just because that would be nice. Ugh, the back is nice too, but I like the front better. Feels so good to be starting a new journal. Sometimes when I'm working on journals that are in the background because they're a custom order or a design team project or something that I need to keep a secret for a little while, it's like, I feel kind of weird. I can't make a video about what I'm doing. 
that's okay because then I get to surprise you with something fun and new that I've that I've done okay so now we can trim off this excess pieces. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's okay. Okay, now, should we decide if I want to stitch on that or not? Or maybe I just want to put it on with brads. I think I'll do just a neat single stitch around it just because I think it will add a little bit. So sewing machine sounds, be warned. It'll only take a moment for me to do this though. It won't take long. Just gotta get my sewing machine organized here. There we go. Okay. just to stress around the edges of this a little bit. Definitely to cover this white on the edge edge. Just a little bit around the edge itself. going to affix this to the front. Don't look at my hideous um, sugar bell bottle. The one that I have my Fabri-Tac in, it sprung a leak, so I have ordered a new bottle. I have no idea how it happened, but it's been like a complete nightmare. I was like working on a glue intensive project yesterday, and I got so much of this stuff on my hands, but Thankfully, I like went and I cleaned my hands like as soon as it happened. To, well, as soon as I was done my project, let's be honest. And then um, it came off pretty easily. I didn't have to like, I think because I got it relatively quickly, it didn't kind of dry on my hands like really well. Okay, so yeah, I should be receiving those new bottles on the weekend, thankfully. Now we have to kind of carefully put this down. We don't want to put it in the wrong spot. Okay. I'll just give it a little, little gentle press here. Just let the glue set up a little. I think I 
possibly might do a brush stroke of Mod Podge over this entire journal. I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. I might not, but I might. Okay, there we go. So then I was also thinking um, of using brads in the corners here. Where are they? There they are. Just got to get my little... I have this sort of like multi-tiered slidey kind of container. I keep all my little hardware pieces in. I have to decide what I want, silver or gold um, for this project. I'm thinking probably gold, but I don't know. Come here, Brads. Oh, they're so stubborn. <laughs> there we go. All right, we have some silver and some gold. So I feel like gold because of the color of the, the ship. But silver could also work because of the color of the water. And the color of the book. Hmm. Gold is always my go-to with these kind of things. I don't know why. I'm going to go gold. <laughs> Thought I would be a wild card, but not today. Not today. All right, I need one more. There we go. Four gold. I'm gonna put this one silver back. Come here. Ah, there we go. The struggle. Okay. So now what I'll do is um, I'll use my um, pokey tool here. And I'm just going to kind of make a little mark as to where I want to put these. And then just kind of poke it right through. One. Two. up these little bitty things oh my goodness let's pop that through and I like how the this little bit of hardware um is on, on the cover of a journal, like adding a book plate or metal edges or just something. I think it really adds to most journals. It really adds some nice character. And those will tuck nicely under the end papers or fabric, depending on what I decide to use. So they're nice flat backs, so they won't cause me any issues. There we go. Okay, we got our little, little gold bolts there. <laughs> so there's a look at the cover for Sea Witches, The Turn of the Tide. Okay. So now, what's next? What do I want to do now? I guess I could work on maybe some ephemera. I haven't selected all the signatures yet. I could also decide what I want to do with the end pages. I was thinking a little bit about trying to use like this, but I think it's too small. Um, unless I were to like 
you know, take a section of it and then stick it down on top of like another piece of paper. It is shiny. I don't know if that matters, but I think like I could get two nice sort of images out of it um, for this this front picture or sorry this uh, for the for this cover. So I could have like her on one side and the boat on the other side. just going to trim here trim away this edge there we go so I think I'll just I actually use my paper trimmer just in case I don't I feel like I'm going straight but it's easy to think that when you're really not and I'm definitely not so <laughs> also the image itself may not be straight that's something that I've learned especially in vintage books you cannot trust that like um the pages and everything are all straight because they usually are not as things over time they get stretched and like that's one thing with them um, you know like that it just so crooked um that's one thing when you dye paper because of the water and stuff like it will warp and stretch a little bit sometimes not that it usually matters it really doesn't but just something to keep in mind if you're trying to do something really kind of specific okay there we go I might put some matte Mod Podge on this, to be honest, just to kind of matte it. It's really shiny, and I'm not into the shiny, shiny. So yeah, I think that would be pretty cool, like, with a background of, like, a blue, you know, paper, and then this, like, an image centered on those. Um, and I could even do them up toward the top like this, cause then it would, oh, that, I'm sorry, that's so bright. Let me just turn this over. Um, so yeah, I could put the image toward the top. Then it would allow me to add like a pocket at the bottom of each of my pages. Like I like to put pockets on the inside. I could do small pockets and not disrupt this image. But I think what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to map Mod Podge this. Um, let me grab my glue book. I can share my process with you what I'm doing with this. This is um, a journal that I'm actually um, sort of sculpting the cover of with uh, wood bark. And uh, this is the drying process that it's going under right now for the first coat of sealant. So that's what's drying. <laughs> Now, we can Mod Podge this on my big glue book here. This is what I use to do all of my, like, Mod Podging and stuff. It's just an old, large book cover that I do all my gluing on. And I need my brush. Give me two seconds. Okay, I'm back. So, just dry this brush off a little bit. Been doing a bit of Mod Podging today. <laughs> okay, so, so this is just the matte Mod Podge. It does bring down the shine in things like this, thankfully, because it's really, really shiny. And I'm just going to do a light, a light coat. Um, Oops, we have some dry bits there. Just like one light coat. I 
think I need to do some grocery shopping tonight. No fun, but it has to get done. So I'm gluing this, I was thinking about how all the funny things that have happened this year, like, and last year during our, you know, this whole situation that we're all in in the world right now, um, all the things that people have gotten into that have gotten popular. And one of the things, I don't know if everyone is aware of this or not, but I think it started on TikTok where like a lot of young people started singing like sea shanties and recording videos of them and like posting them on like TikTok and YouTube and Instagram reels and stuff like that and they're extremely funny my girlfriend's son um he did some of them and uh, I laughed my head off it's so funny there we go okay so I know it still looks shiny right now but that's because it's wet but when um I return to my next video on this journal I'll show it to you again and you'll you'll probably notice a distinctive dulled down shine it'll be a little more matte so okay so that's what we got done for this video I know it's not much but this is how things start out so um actually I think I feel pretty good about the progress that I've made so far um so yeah uh thanks for joining me for the turn of the tide and I'll talk to you in the next video all my social media information is down below in the description box and I'd love it if you subscribed have a great day thanks for joining me bye for now